So let's talk about what is access control. Here I am going to give you an example and you will tell me what is the meaning of access control. Make sure that you write it down in the comment section below. Now imagine this is our office. This looks very empty right now but let us fill this. Now this is your work area. This is the breakout area where we have a lot of fun. These are our meeting rooms where we waste a lot of time. <laughs> Sorry, we discuss very important things. And this is our CEO's cabin. And we also have a server room. I hope you like the office. Now let's bring up the wonderful team. Here we have four members, the CEO, the dev team, the server team. And if you see every member on the team rightly called the employees have an ID card with them, which allows them to enter the office. Like you will be having an ID card when you actually go to the office, you have biometrics. Similarly, these people or the team members that we have here also have an ID card. Notice that each door that you see here is color coded. So if you see here, we have uh, yellow, yellow for all the common areas. We have red for the server room and we have green for the CEO's cabin. Watch this. It is very interesting. When the office starts, we can see each employee has access to his or her respective work area and all of the team members have access to the work area, breakout area and the meeting rooms because they will be using it. Next, the CEO is the only person who has access to the CEO's cabin. So if you can see here, we have the green color door and the green color code matching for the CEO. Next, the CEO and the server team have access to the server room. Now just take your time and try to understand why did we do this? We all know that every person has a certain job or responsibility and they have to fulfill a certain role in the organization. A developer has no access to the CEO's cabin not just because it doesn't have any work there but also as a security measure. A similar thing goes with the server room. We are just restricting access by adding a particular condition here and I hope you are understanding what I mean when we are trying to just put restriction based on a particular condition. So now tell me what is access control? As rightly being pointed out here, access control is a selective restriction of access to a place or other resources. Understand this carefully. Access control is a selective restriction of access. For now, you need to think of how you can provide access control to the resources you have. And that's the same reason why we have separation of duties and separation of business units. I have explained this in the AWS organization principle session as well. So if you haven't seen that, please watch it again. In real-time scenarios in the same organization, we have multiple AWS accounts for each team or pillar. If you see here, we have an account for development team. We have one for security and the last one that we have is for production. And based on that, if you see, we have to make sure that the developers and testers should have access to the development account and we should restrict access for them to the production account or the production environment. Next, the security team has access to all the accounts so that it can monitor the resources and apply certain organizational policies. And next one is that we have the senior engineering team who has access to both the development account and the production account. That is why when you think just about yourself, it seems to be very simple. But when you think of managing more than 100 accounts and how they are being governed in a single organization, that changes the whole outlook of how we are going to manage it. You need to understand that IAM can provide you with the features by which you can manage access for users who have a specific role and responsibility. But here you may ask me that if AWS IAM is sufficient to manage all the AWS accounts in the organization. And I would say no. We still have services like AWS organization that can help us manage multiple accounts under the roof. But the underlying permissions are still managed by IAM. And that is why we must understand what AWS is trying to tell us. Each IAM user is associated with one and only one AWS account. And why this is an important statement is because let's suppose you are a part of the development team. And your organization has a AWS account called development account. Similarly, there might be 10 to 15 other teams who have a development team and they might also make use of a separate dev account. The same reason when you create a user in an account, you don't necessarily create the same user across all the development accounts. Instead, the same user can assume role and access resources from other accounts. Yes, by using STS or what we also call as a temporary session or a token based login. Secondly, 
an IAM user is a resource in IAM that has associated credentials and permissions. An IAM user can represent a person or an application that uses its credential to make AWS request. Remember this. And if you are a user, then you can log into your AWS account using your SSO or STS or even by using your credentials to perform the operation. But what if you are working on a deployment where you have to perform operations on other accounts? You don't need to log into each and every instance across all the AWS accounts and then perform the operation. That would be tedious, isn't it? So we can create roles, assume the role and with enough permission, we can perform the operations we want. So you need to understand that you are an entity or resource when it comes to IAM. And that is why AWS decides who can access what, but based on what permissions and policies are being set. And that is why it is very important for you to remember and feed this in your mind about AWS IAM. That is who can access what. The who is going to be the workforce user with AWS SSO that is single sign on and the workloads with IAM. That's where you define the policies that is can access part which provides permissions that are defined in your IAM policies and what Yes, the what part is your resources within your AWS organization. Here, if you see, it's not mentioned AWS account, but it has rightly been mentioned it's AWS organization. And that is why a lot of people get confused between AWS account and AWS organization. Where AWS organization is an account management service that lets you consolidate multiple AWS accounts into an organization that you create and centrally manage them. With organizations, you can create member accounts and invite existing accounts to join your organization. But here, I will not confuse you by talking about AWS organizations. Don't worry, we will discuss AWS organizations in the upcoming session. 